Hey, welcome back to factoring. Factoring is another essential skill of the course, and this is part three. We're going to deal with complex trinomials, so let's get started. Okay, so we have to recall that for, for multiplying polynomials, uh, we multiply every term in the first polynomial times every term in the second polynomial. So to multiply 2x minus 5 times 3x minus 7, we take 2x times 3x, which is 6x squared, 2x times negative 7, which is negative 14x, and then we multiply negative 5 times 3x, which is negative 15x, and negative 5 times negative 7, which is positive 35. If we add it all together now, we get 6x squared minus 29x plus 35. Okay, so we're going to do the opposite of that. Now let's do the opposite of multiplying. That is factoring. So factoring is the opposite. Uh, and we're going to look at complex trinomials. So let's just jump in with the first example. Uh, we're going to try to factor 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. I'm going to have to do some rough work on the side. The first thing I'm going to do is take these values of 2 and 3 and multiply them together to give me 6. I now look for two numbers. These two numbers will multiply themselves to give me that 6. But if I take those same two numbers and add them together, I will get the middle value of positive 7. Okay, so we can think about numbers that multiply to 6, like 1 times 6, minus 1 times negative 6, 2 times 3, negative 2 times negative 3, and so on. In fact, that's the complete list. And as it turns out, 1 times 6 is the, num is the pair of numbers we need because although 1 times 6 equals 6, 1 plus 6 is 7. Now we can go back to the main problem and get started. We're going to leave our 2x squared and our 3 the same. And we will break down the middle term, this 7x squared in the middle. We will turn that into plus 1x squared and plus 6x squared. That's the 1 and the 6 from the rough work we did on the side. Let's continue. Looking at the first two terms, 2x squared and 1x, I notice the common factor is x. So x times 2x plus 1 will give me 2x squared plus 1x. And for 6x and 3, the common factor is 3. And 3 times 2x plus 1 gives me those two terms. Aha! Now I see that there is a common 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. So there is a common factor of 2x plus 1, and it is multiplying times x plus 3. Okay, if we had the time on this video, we could then multiply that back out and see that, in fact, it gives us the original expression, and so we're done. Okay, moving on, moving on here, uh, we're going to try another question here. Uh, I'd like you to try this one. We're going to do 3x squared plus 16x plus 5. Sorry, 16x plus 5. Okay, take a moment right now to try that on your own and pause. Okay, welcome back. Here we go. On the side, I do some rough work. 3 times 5 gives me 15. I now need two numbers that multiply together to give me 15. And those same two numbers, when added together, will give me 16. Okay, it might not take too long to recognize eventually that 1 times 15 gives you 15, and 1 plus 15 gives you 16. So we can now get started on our actual problem. This expression is the same as 3x squared and 5. And we are now going to take this 16x and rewrite it as plus 1x plus 15x. In fact, had I written it as plus 15x plus 1x in the opposite way, it still would have actually worked out in the end. Okay, let's continue. 3x squared plus 1x. The common factor is x, and in fact, those two terms are x times 3x plus 1. 
In the second pair of terms, 15x plus 5, the common factor is 5. And so that is 5 times 3x plus 1. Hey, this is exciting. I have a 3x plus 1 and another 3x plus 1. So there is a common binomial factor of 3x plus 1, and it is multiplying both x and 5. In fact, we've arrived at our answer. Once again, you can check that by multiplying it out. Okay, let me get you to try one more complex trinomial problem. So this is going to be 6x squared minus 11x plus 3. So take a moment to pause and try that yourself. Go ahead. Okay, welcome back. Here we go. On the side here, I just need to find two numbers that multiply to give me 18. But when added together, it will give me negative 11. Boy, that, this seems tough for me. So I just kind of start making a list of numbers that multiply to 18. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. And okay, there we go. That's actually the complete list. I was just straightforward. 1, 2, 3. Now, I notice that negative 1 times negative 18, negative 2 times negative 9, and negative 3 times negative 6 would also multiply to give me positive 18. And that's important because I need a negative 11. So negative 2 times negative 9 and negative 2 plus negative 9 actually gives me that negative 11. Let's proceed to actually answer the question. We have a 6x squared and a 3. And in the middle, we will break down this minus 11 into negative 2x and negative 9x. Okay, let's see. The two first terms, 6x squared minus 2x, the common factor there is 2x. So we have 2x times 3x minus 1. And the second two terms we have a common factor of 3 times negative 3x plus 1. And now I encounter a small problem that's actually quite easily fixed. You see that my minus 3x plus 1 is exactly the opposite of my 3x minus 1. So I could actually rewrite this as 2x times 3x minus 1 and minus 3 times 3x minus 1. And if you multiply 3 times negative 3x plus 1 or minus 3 times 3x minus 1, you'll see that they're in fact exactly the same thing. And in fact, they're exactly negative, sorry, negative 9x plus 3. Okay, I'm pretty much done here. I just have to notice that I have a common factor now of 3x minus 1, and it is multiplying both 2x and negative 3. Okay, great. Try some problems on your own, because this stuff sure is fun.